modern geology has dated some rocks found on the Earth to be about 4 billion years old. And many scientists agree that the Earth is most likely 4 to 4.5 billion years old. The only problem with this is that there is no place in the Earth's ocean that can be dated more than 200 million years. In 1912, Alfred Wegener, a famous German Arctic explorer and meteorologist, released his theory of continental drift. He had good reason for developing this theory because the fossil record showed many plants and land animals lived on all the continents, including Antarctica. South America and Africa seemed to look as though they fit together and had once broken apart in the past and created the Atlantic Ocean, which now separates them. But it wasn't until the 1950s that continental drift became an accepted scientific theory. The current theory is that all the continents were once joined together on the Atlantic side, a huge supercontinent called Pangaea, one huge island on the Earth, while the other three quarters of the Earth was covered with deep oceans. The problem is, is that 30 years later, the U.S. Natural Geophysical Data Center released a map of the ages of the complete seafloor, which proves the modern theory of Pangaea is wrong. The continents not only fit together if you remove the Atlantic Ocean, they also fit together if you remove the Pacific Ocean. If you remove all the oceans on the Earth, the upper tectonic plates fit together like a broken vase. The Earth has been getting larger in diameter, and has been since the ocean started spreading about 200 million years ago. This is what is referred to as the growing Earth theory. Seafloor spreading is a provable fact and is not in debate in any way. The problem with plate tectonics is that there is no proof to substantiate the theory of subduction. Current theory says that the ocean floor recycles itself, that although the ocean is spreading, it is also sliding under the continents into the mantle. This theory is from the early 1900s, and modern data has disproved it, yet geologists hold on to it. Scientists are no different than most people. Once they believe a certain thing, they tend to hold on to it for all it's worth, even if there is overwhelming evidence to the contrary. This mostly happens in the public sector of science, where politics prevails, and public money is their only funding source. If the ocean floor is recycling itself, as they say, why aren't there massive volcanoes and rings of fire around all the edges of all the continents? Because subduction doesn't happen, and the ocean floor cannot dive into a molten rock that is twice as dense as the ocean floor. The rifts in the oceans are where the continents first separated, which runs the circle of the globe and almost every continent. There are over 80,000 miles of deep undersea thermal vents that not only spew out all different sorts of gas continuously, they are the point at where the ocean spreads apart. Here is a map of the Ring of Fire, and it only exists in the Pacific Ocean. This is modern scientist justification for the subduction theory. If you look at this map of the ages of the sea floor, it clearly shows that the youngest ocean floor is along the rifts, which is the black line mirrored on each side by the red. The oldest sea floor, except for along the west coast of the United States, is the ocean floor next to the continents. You can see this from the map that the ocean floor ages are symmetrical from the rifts, growing older as it reaches the shores of the continents. If you look at the Pacific Rift, it runs right along the western coast of the United States. This is why there are so many earthquakes on the west coast. The land is very close to the spreading ocean, and huge compressional pressures built up on land. This is the ring of fire that is supposed to be the smoking gun of subduction. But the ring of fire is less than 40% of the length of the spreading rifts. Why is there no ring of fire in the Atlantic? Indian, or Arctic Ocean, then. It's because compared to all other oceans and seas, the Pacific is spreading much wider and faster than any other ocean, and the Eastern Asian continental plates were literally crushed to pieces. 
How can modern subduction theory explain the African Rift Valley? The Horn of Africa is slowly breaking apart from the main continent. One day there will be an ocean separating these two land masses. Notice the gases that are escaping from the rift, just like the deep ocean vents. If subduction were true, why aren't there mountains of loosely packed ocean sediment along every shoreline in the world? An oceanic plate can slide under a continental plate so smooth to not even leave any of its upper sediment behind, yet cause all these massive earthquakes? Deep ocean trenches are modern geology's answer, but studies have shown there is not enough sediment in the trenches to justify subduction. The Atlantic Ocean is spreading on both sides, yet there are no volcanoes on the east coast of the Americas like there are in the Ring of Fire, at least not like you see on the west coast of the United States or the western coast of Europe and Africa to account for any subduction which by its theory, there should be tons of active volcanoes all along the continental coast to make up for the seafloor spreading, which there aren't. If recycling of the seafloor were true, why wouldn't there be a ring of fire between all continents all over the world? The problem with the Pangaea theory is shown in how South America and Africa fit together on a modern day Earth, because they don't fit together at all. If you join the two continents at the northern edge, there is an angled gap at their southern ends. This is no different than a button-down shirt on somebody who is too large for it. The bottom will angle out because the person is too large for the shirt to fit properly. But on a smaller globe, South America and Africa fit together perfectly, both north and south. A well-respected geologist from the University of Tasmania named Samuel Carey published a book called The Expanding Earth in 1976 that pointed out that the continental drift theory is wrong and that the Earth is growing. He said the continents are fixed on Earth and that all the growth is happening in the oceans. He also said that not only do all continents fit together perfectly in the Atlantic, they also fit together at the same time in the Pacific but on a much smaller planet. The scientific community ignored him, just like they ignored Wagner initially on his continental drift theory. They asked Carey to explain the mechanism that caused the Earth to grow, which he could not. The scientific community was being highly superficial since no one had properly explained the mechanism for subduction or continental drift, simply saying that upper tectonic plates drifted on convectional currents of the mantle does not prove the theory. But many scientists today are taking a closer look at the growing earth theory. The growing earth theory takes plate tectonics to its next logical conclusion. Plate tectonics was only giving half the picture of what was really happening. If the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean spread, yet the continents fit together like a broken sphere with all the oceans removed, one would logically deduce that the Earth must be larger today than it was in the past. The question is, since all planets in our solar system are different sizes, isn't it reasonable to believe just because humans are now observing them in our extremely short-lived existence with geological time, that the planet's process of forming may not be over? Logically, why would anyone believe that the Earth or any celestial body will never get any bigger or smaller? In the last 200 million years, the Earth's diameter has doubled due to oceanic growth, quadrupling its size and gravity. There is much more compelling evidence to support a growing Earth than there is for the plate tectonic theory. Many scientists once agreed that the Earth was the center of the universe, and that the Earth was flat. Even when Galileo proved not everything revolved around the Earth showing the phases of Venus, it was ignored. Even today, scientific dogma is held in high esteem while scientific proof is ignored. America's Midwest was once a giant ancient sea. We know this because of the huge limestone deposits left by sedimentation. Notice the approximate area of these limestone deposits. It lies in the area between the high plains in the west and the Appalachian Mountains in the east. 